What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Stefan here from App Stuff and this video today is a lesson straight from my new iOS interview mastery course where I teach you everything you need to know to land jobs that make over $300,000 a year at companies like Google, Meta, and Uber. This is a video on big O notation and if we check out the course curriculum here, it is taken from our data structure and algorithm section. So the link for this course is in the description guys. You can check out the full course curriculum here. I will be posting a couple videos directly from the course to the YouTube channel to give you guys a free preview of it. And you can either purchase the course as a one-time purchase for 149 or you can become a member here with us and get free access to the course with the monthly or annual or lifetime memberships. So the link for all of this stuff is in the description, guys. Let's go ahead and dive into the video now that's going to cover big O notation in data structures and algorithms. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back. Before we get started with the solution to our follow-up problem, we need to talk about a very key concept in data structures and algorithms that is referred to as big O notation. So let's go ahead and dive in. What is it? So big O notation essentially helps us analyze how an algorithm's efficiency changes as the input size grows. And there are ultimately two key aspects to consider. The first is time complexity. So essentially, how fast is our algorithm? So this measures how the number of operations increases with input size. It tells us how long an algorithm will take to run. So you can imagine this is a very important concept when trying to make the algorithm as efficient as possible, right? Algorithms that are really slow are really bad. Algorithms that are really fast are really good. So let's take a look at this graph and analyze what's going on here, guys. So these represent different big O notations that we could have with respect to time complexity of our algorithms. So on the x-axis, we have input size. And on the y-axis, we have time, which represents the amount of time it's going to take our algorithm to run. So we have this relationship between input size and time. So n here represents input size. So if I have an array with five elements inside of it, n is five. If I have an array with five million elements in it, n is 5 million, right? So we're gonna analyze these different big O notations that we see on the graph, and we're gonna go from fastest to slowest. So the fastest possible time that an array or an algorithm can run is in constant time. So the operation takes the same amount of time no matter the input size. An example of this would be accessing an array element by index. So for example, I could show you what that looks like in the code really fast. If I just said, nums zero or nums one, nums two, whatever. It doesn't matter how large nums is here. That would always run in the same amount of time, which is constant lookup time. So that's the fastest an algorithm can possibly run. Next up, we have logarithmic time. So the problem size shrinks with each step, right? Or essentially as the input size grows, our algorithm becomes increasingly faster. Well, it doesn't actually get faster, but it takes less and less time as the input size increases, right? So that runs in logarithmic time. Next up, we have linear time. So here, the runtime grows directly with input size with a linear relationship between input size and time. And next up, the worst possible performance we could have is quadratic performance here. So it, you can see that as input size grows, the amount of time it takes the al algorithm to complete increases exponentially. And this happens with stuff like nested loops. So if you have a for loop within a for loop, your runtime would be O n squared. If you have a for loop within a for loop within a for loop, it's O n cubed, so on and so forth, right? So before we go to the next slide, guys, I wanna take a quick pause and dive back into our code. And I want you guys to try to figure out what the runtime complexity of this particular algorithm is. So pause the video really quick and see if you can figure that out. All right, guys, so you should have been able to figure out that this is, runs in O n time, where n is the size of our input. And some of you might not understand that, and I wanna break it down. So the reason is you might say, well, hey, n is one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And if I searched for like four, my algorithm would only, you know, would complete on the second iteration of the loop. But what would happen if I searched for nine? It wouldn't complete until I got to the last element in the array. 
Or what would happen if I search for 23, which isn't even in the array? It would have to loop through every single item in the array, which is represented by n. Therefore, we have a linear runtime, which is directly related to the size of our input here. So this algorithm runs in o n time. So anytime you guys are looking at big O notation, it's often calculated by the worst case scenario because you ha that's the only sort of constant you can have or control you can have, right? Um, we have to uh, imagine like, hey, if I search for something that isn't even there, I, c I would have to loop through every single item in this array. So it would run in O n time, right? So whatever that time is, it could be 0.01 seconds, one second, two seconds, whatever it is directly related to my input size. So our algorithm there would run in O n time. So that brings me to our next point, which will come, uh, we'll get to with our follow up in a little bit. I wanna finish up this slide because if you remember here, I said there are two key aspects to consider. The first is time, the next is space. So a huge factor in our algorithms is also how much memory does the algorithm use. So here are some examples of space complexity, guys. So constant space, the algorithm uses a fixed amount of memory regardless of input, input size. Examples like swapping two variables. Linear space, the memory usage grows proportionally with input size, like starting a, storing a copy of an input array in a new array. And then quadratic space, memory grows exponentially, often due to storing all possible pairs of combinations, like in an adjacency matrix for a graph or something. So in our algorithm here, you should also try to figure out which one of these it uh, uses for our space complexity. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure that out. All right, guys, and the answer to that is O1. So we don't use any extra space in this array. We're given the input, right? But we're not counting the input in our solution. The input is a given and the only way we would uh, use like O N space, which is what you might've thought is if we said like var result equals nums, right? And then loop through res this result array or something. So essentially we're creating a direct copy of nums, meaning that we would be using just as much space as nums and that would be O N complexity or linear space. And an example of quadratic space would be like creating a new uh, copy of this like in every iteration of my loop or something, right? But this runs in O1, or sorry, has O1 uh, space complexity because we don't create any extra data structures here. We're not creating an array. We're not really creating any values whatsoever. So things like variables like don't count. If you said like var result equals zero, that still counts as O1 space complexity. So let's go ahead here and uh, you know write some comments. We can say O N time O one space. And this brings me to our next point with our follow up question. So this makes it a lot more challenging and we're actually gonna be writing out the solution to th this in the next video. So for our follow up guys, we say given that the array is sorted in ascending order, we want to write an algorithm that runs in O log N time. So before I had N log N, we actually just wanna write an algorithm that runs in log N time. So it's going to go back to that logarithmic runtime. So instead of running in linear time complexity, we wanna write an algorithm that runs in logarithmic time complexity. So that would obviously be significantly more efficient as we can see from our graph here. And you can imagine from like a user experience perspective, right? Imagine you had a competing app in the app store against you and you guys had algorithms that you needed to write. Like, let's say for a dating app, like I just built that's currently in the app store and you have some algorithms to write for like your matching algorithm and one dating app runs in O N time, the other runs in O log N time. And essentially the app runs much faster, right? Imagine like an app like Tinder where there's millions of users and your time complexity for your matching algorithm or whatever you have in that application is logarithmic instead of linear or instead of quadratic, it's gonna be much faster and provide a much better user experience, right? And that's also gonna be better for things like your phone battery life because it uses less computing power. So guys, this stuff is of the utmost importance when you are writing algorithms and trying to write algorithms efficiently. So with that being said, 
we are gonna hop into our follow-up solution in the next problem, or sorry, the next video, and it's gonna be super fun and really work those muscles in your brain, in your brain, guys. So get excited for that. We'll see you there. Peace.